Hi, thank you for uh, joining me in the Louis file today. We are, yes we are, once again, continuing in our uh, study through the letter to the Ephesians. And I tell you, I've, I've enjoyed this. I hope you have. I hope it's uh, been helpful to you. I hope you would uh, tell others about it if it's been a benefit to you. And uh, I just want to, uh, to read verse by verse through the scriptures and see what God is saying to, to us. And I think this is the best way uh, to do it. Uh, so there you go. Uh, we're in Ephesians 4, actually. We're on the last verse. We're getting ready to do Ephesians 4, verse 32. Uh, this may be a, a little bit of a shorter video because I probably don't want to move into 5 yet. I want to kind of divide this up a little bit. You know, I don't want it to blur over. Um, so today we're going to read one verse and we're going to see where it takes us. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Very interesting verse to me. There's more going on here than first meets the eye. So look what it says. It says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. So this is another verse. Uh, piece of what Paul is telling the believer here, the new self, the new person we are in Christ is a forgiving person, a tender-hearted person. And uh, so it, it should be, it is our nature now. It's, you know, when Christ or the Holy Spirit moves into your life and you're joined to God by way of his spirit, this loving, caring, patient, merciful, forgiving God uh, is now in you. And so therefore, you become that same kind of person. Um, you may not have been at all kind of forgiving or anything before that, but now you are because you're in Christ. All right, so this brings up an interesting thing, and, th and this may, to some, may be nitpicking, uh, but I think it's worth looking at. Uh, so let's, let's back up a second and go to Matthew 6. Let me see if I can uh, show you something here. Matthew 6. It is a very common uh, set of verses here. We commonly call it the Lord's Prayer. So the disciples come to Jesus, you know, and want him to teach them how to pray. So we have, you know, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. I'm not going to read all that. We Most of us probably know this prayer. But I do want you to notice what is said after the prayer, really, here. Uh, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Now this is Jesus speaking. So it's red letters in my Bible, and, uh, and, we, and we need to have our ears perked up when Jesus is talking, I would think. Uh, so he says this, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Okay. Then he says, But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. Now, so this is very conditional, is it not? So he's saying, if you forgive others, then God will forgive you. If you don't, he won't. Well, so we always, you know, Christians like to say that we're saved by grace through faith and it's not of ourselves and it's nothing that we can do. I always hear people say things like this. They say, well, you can't clean yourself up and come to God. You just come to him just as you are. Now, let me ask you this. If I have to forgive other people in order to get God to forgive me, is that not a condition? That would not be just grace through faith, would it? That would be something that is laid on me, a burden on me to do, something that I have to do in order to get forgiveness. Now, something doesn't smell right about that to me, and it shouldn't with you. God's love uh, is unconditional. He loves us unconditionally. And I, and I believe that his forgiveness is there. In one sense, it's unconditional. Of course, it is based upon Jesus' crucifixion, death, and burial, and resurrection. So that is the condition. But he met that condition himself, right? He, he in, the, in the Son, Jesus, performed what was required of us. He took our death. And then therefore, uh, Paul tells us that we died with him and we were buried with him and raised with him. So, so here we see Jesus telling us that our forgiveness is conditional. Something doesn't smell right 
what could possibly be going on here? Well, let me suggest to you that in Matthew 6, now I'm not, I don't want to make too much or too little of this, but this is Jesus walking around during the time that the law was in full effect. The temple was still there, the sacrifices had to still be made, the, uh, the rituals and the ceremonies were going on at the temple at this very time and place. And I think, personally, what's going on here, because this is right on the heels, right after chapter 5 in Matthew, and then we go to 6 and we got this prayer. Well, all through 5, he's, Jesus is saying, you've heard that it was said, do not uh, murder, but I say don't even hate your brother without a cause. And then he says, you've heard that it was said, do not commit adultery, but I say don't even lust in your heart after a woman, or you've already committed adultery. He ends chapter 5 by saying, Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's telling us before that, he says, you got to love your enemies, not just the ones you, you know, that love you. You have to love your enemies. You have to treat them with this unconditional love. So Jesus, he's ratcheting down on what the law is really saying. He's telling us in so many words, if you want to be like God, this is what you got to do. Well, all along, he knows that no one can perform up to this perfect standard. I mean, he says, be perfect as your heavenly Father's perfect. That is a command from Jesus, and it is a correct command because God the Father is perfect, and we're made in his image. He's a perfect God that demands perfection from his image bearers, and that is correct of him to demand that. The problem comes in on our side when we can't love our enemies, and we can't stop lusting, and we can't stop hatred, and we little, surely, surely can't forgive other people. Not in our own power and strength. So when Jesus is telling us in, in Matthew 6 to forgive or you can't be forgiven, what he's doing is, is he's driving us out of our our deceived, independent mindset. He's trying to get us to wake up and scream at the top of our lungs, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Who will rescue me from this impossible scenario? Who will free me from this ever trying to get things right and, and trying to perform in my own fleshy strength? Who will ever rescue me from that? It's a deception. So Jesus is, is trying to get us to cry out and say, I can't forgive. I can't be perfect. I can't stop lusting. I, I have hatred I can't get rid of. <laughs> That's what he's doing. It's before the cross. Now, if you look with me in Luke, we'll see the next step in this thing here. Luke 23. Luke 23, uh, verse 34. Jesus is taken and he's placed on the cross, Luke 23, 34. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots, dividing up his garments among themselves. Jesus knew that we had no ability to forgive others. While Even in the very act of him being crucified, he cried out to the Father to forgive us and the very ones that nailed him there and he did that because he knew they were acting in ignorance just like we do we hate and lust and we uh we mistreat each other and we uh, don't forgive each other we do that based on ignorance normally based on a deception that we're independent and it's my life and i'll do what i want and it's not affecting anybody but me uh, when you got a bunch of people running around in the world believing they're the center of the universe and they're the only ones that really count, we're bound to scrape and bump into each other and we're also bound to need forgiveness of one another. But, but can we really conjure that up? See, and I think that's what I want you to see today. So now, back to Ephesians 4.32, we see where the Apostle Paul says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other. Listen to this. Just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. In Matthew 6, Jesus says, forgive or you can't be forgiven. An impossibility. In Luke 23, Jesus on the cross says, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. So now, 
years later, the Apostle Paul writes Ephesians on, on our side of the cross after the death, burial, and resurrection. Resurrection signifying that Jesus' sacrifice was enough. God the Father says, that's my boy. <laughs> and what he did was enough. So now the forgiveness flows. The love is flowing. The uh, reconciliation is flowing. So the Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 4, he says to forgive as you've been forgiven. In other words, since you have been forgiven, that should spill over now out of you to others who treat and mistreat you and, and retake on the same attitude as they don't know what they're doing. They just simply don't know what they're doing. They don't, people don't always intentionally want to hurt you. <laughs> They act out of ignorance. They act out of selfishness, pride, uh, blindness. So we give them the benefit of the doubt, as I've heard it put. And we just, we live a life of forgiveness and we live a life unoffended. That's Christ. That's Christ in you. That's the new creature that you are. It's a, it's a creature that, that doesn't lie and steal and, and isn't full of anger. And, and it's, a cre it's a new creature that is put away bitterness and envy and malice. It's a, it's a creature that speaks only what is good and edifying to its neighbor. It's a creature, it's a creature that contains the Holy Spirit and you, you keep the Holy Spirit from being grieved at all cost. And one of those ways is that you don't, you don't take offense at everything that comes your way and harbor it and let it become unforgiveness. That unforgiveness will harden into bitterness and then that bitterness will end in hardness of heart and, and it will become increasingly more and more difficult to ever be free so i'm praying if there's anybody watching this that has uh, somewhere in that process of offense unforgiveness bitterness and hardness of heart wherever you lie in that thing i just i just pray that you would cry out to god and say i can't forgive them i can't fix this but I'm trusting you to do it. And just hand it over to him and realize that you have been forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You have been brought out of darkness. You've been given a new mind and a new heart and a new life, a new purpose in him. So live a life of forgiving others because that's who he is in you. And when you do that, the grieving process of the Holy Spirit will be lifted. And forgiveness that will wash through, that reconciliation will, uh, will transform your heart and your mind. You will have peace and rest like you've never known. Just let it go. All right. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'll see you next time on the Louis File. We'll be picking up in Ephesians chapter 5. See you later.